So as many know, BTK inhibitors really have changed markedly the treatment landscape for CLL um, and are very effective in controlling disease for most patients. Um, more often than resistance, the problem though that one can run into is cumulative toxicities of the inhibitors. Um, and so for first generation, abrutinib um, ran into not just infections, but myalgias, rashes, atrial fibrillation, bleeding risk, we call those adverse events of special interest. For the second generation BTK inhibitors, the calibrutinib and xanabrutinib, some of those BTK specific toxicities are much less. Um, so for patients that start on abrutinib, there are studies showing that many, um, if the intolerance becomes too much, can transition to second generation. That's one option of course also have the nidoclax-based therapy. But before switching, depending which BTK they're on, um, often depending on the risk, um, one can try to mitigate the risk. So for example, bleeding risk, um, many patients might be on supplements or other antiplatelet agents that they don't necessarily need to be on. So I think just being thoughtful about ways to manage it. All of these inhibitors, of course, have dosing guidelines. So one of the options too, if, if patients are still on the drug, you need to interrupt drug or dose reduce, you wanna follow the guidelines of all those drugs um, individually. So uh, it could take a while to go through all of them. I think the key is patients don't always have to stop, certainly don't have to switch out of class because of some of the other options available. Um, so really individualizing it for patients.